All righty, y'all. Here we go again. Y'all, you better fasten your seat belts and your shoulder harness for this one. If you got a crash helmet, you better put it on. If you got some steel toed boots, you better put those on because I'm going to be stomping on some toes. What is the biggest sin in America and probably the world, but for sure America right now? I don't know, but I bet you it is lust. And I say that because of all the infidelity in marriages going on. The young kids that are not even age legal yet having sex with multiple partners. A 16 year old girl the other day said she had had sex with over 100 men. She's 16 years old. All the gay community. And look at how they have exploded in the last few years. When I was in my teens and 20s and probably 30s, I never knew a gay person. You very, very rarely ever heard of somebody that was gay. And then one or two came out of the closet and Closet doors seem to just fall off the hinges after that. I don't know what the percentage is. I don't care. One is too many. It is, and I don't care. I don't care what kind of sex it is whether it's male and female, male and male, female and female, 11 years of age, 111 years of age, I don't care. It all is sin. And the Bible even says if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. That was my downfall. But it was also my salvation because God saved me from it. Goodness gracious, y'all. And he changed me. He made me a different person. He had to do it. He had to take it away because I wasn't going to give it up. I loved it. I wallowed in it. And I kept going back and wallowing in it some more and more and more. It got so out of hand that I was finding women on the Internet on the other side of the world hopping on an airplane and going there. And I'm not talking about prostitutes. None of them were prostitutes. They were all everyday, ordinary people, had jobs, were successful. But they had lust just like I had lust. And a person that does that cannot be a Christian, in my opinion.
the Bible all the way through talks about the sin that it is. And, you know, maybe you can slip and do it once as a Christian. But to continue doing it over and over and over, that's not a Christian. Let me read you some stuff. And I could read you probably a third of the Bible, but I'm not. Y'all grab your Bible. And I'll put this in the description box. And any time before you start listening to one of my videos, one of my long videos, go to the description box and look at the scripture reference. Get your Bible, and then when you hit the play button to listen, have your Bible open and ready to read along with me. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to people through God's Holy Word. So I want you not just listening to me, but reading your Bible with me as I read. I don't care what I'm doing. You know, I, I quote scriptures. And I want you to have your Bible ready so you can read it with me. And before you do that, before you hit the play button on my video, pray. And ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and tutor you as you listen to me sharing God's words and as your eyes look at God's words. That's how the Holy Spirit educates you and grows you, is by you reading the Word. So anytime you pick up this book, first pray and ask the Holy Spirit to be with you, to guide you, to tutor you as you read God's Holy Word. And you'll get a whole lot more out of it and it will the, the meaning and the messages that God has will come alive to you. You will understand it a whole lot better and read the same scripture over and over and over. And not all at the same time, but, you know, read it one day and half a year later read it again and half a year later read it again. God's Word is living Word. He's got a lot of messages for you, and he's just going to give you what you need at that particular moment each time you read it. So what when you read the same scriptures again in six months, he may give you something totally different than what he did today. It, it's just awesome the way it works. And it's not that he's changing what's written. He's just expanding on it. And it is so awesome, y'all. It, it just blows my mind how he works, how the Holy Spirit works. God told me to use the Holy Spirit as my tutor, and that has made all the difference in the world. All right, y'all. Now that you've got your Bible and turned to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Let's read together, and after you've prayed, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you and to you, let's read together, starting at verse 9, and I'm going to go all the way to, verse, uh, to chapter 7. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 9, know ye not that the unrighteous and anybody that commits one sin is unrighteous. One sin will send you to hell. The unrighteous is everybody that's going to hell. And of course, nobody can live life with just one sin. There will be multiple sins. Nobody except Jesus. Jesus never sinned, not one time. All right, 
Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. And there is so much deception out there today, y'all. Everywhere. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Bam! It's in God's holy word, y'all. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All right. And it said, and such were some of you. Past tense. You're not anymore you used to be. That, that's me. I'm not anymore, but I used to be. I was one of the biggest sinners in the world, y'all. And I was flying all over the world to enjoy my sin. Just like a pig going back to the mud hole over and over and over. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the listen to this, y'all. Get your ears open. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Do not defile something that belongs to the Lord, y'all. Woe be unto you if you do. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not? Listen to this, y'all. Listen. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? Remember in Genesis, the two shall become one flesh? You have sex with somebody and the two become one. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that is a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with the price, and that price was the blood of Jesus Christ. 
for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God, God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Bam, yo. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are not to defile that temple in any way, shape, or form. Illicit sex is one of the ways. That's the way I think most people defile it. But so is overeating. So is drunkardness. So is anything else. Our body is the temple of God. We are not our own. We belong to God, a true Christian. And if you're doing that stuff, or any sin, over and over and over, you're not in Christ. You are pretending to be like I did. It's time for you to wake up to the truth. It's time for you to repent of your sins and to turn away from your sins and ask Lord Jesus into your heart. He did it for me. And I don't even, I don't even know how many different women I've been with. I know for a fact it was over 400 different ones. And it was probably closer to seven or eight hundred. I don't know though. That was all. I just I was so addicted. That was all I could think about. And it cost me a marriage. It cost me a twenty-eight year marriage. And a lot, lot more than that. And I guarantee you, the loss is not worth. The temporary satisfaction. And if something happens to you in your unrepentant state, you're going to go to hell. So friends, today is the day of salvation. And the days, I can say that, are running out rapidly. Look at everything going on in the world. You're playing Russian roulette with your soul. And that's something you don't want to do. Don't be foolish. Stop the nonsense. Repent. Ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, my friends. Look at the scriptures I'll put in the description box below this video title. All right, you got it. I love you, and if I wasn't concerned about your eternal home and your salvation, I wouldn't be doing this, y'all. But I know most people in the world are lost, and I know that most of those people commit sexual immorality, just like I used to do. It's time to stop the nonsense and become obedient to Jesus Christ. All right, y'all. God bless you, and good night.